Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi wa So we started studying last time was al-marfu'at min al-asma which are uh, nouns that are given the status of rafi'ah within a sentence okay so we talked about al-fa'il uh, and the second one was al maf'ulu alladhi lam yusamma fa'iluhu meaning the object so the fa'il is a subject and then an object that doesn't have a an, an identified doesn't have an identified subject within the sentence meaning the subject has been uh, conceptually removed through using a passive verb okay and it's called na'ib al the alter the alter uh, 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 the substitute for uh, the subject or an alternative uh, subject uh, examples of that is um, uh, is akala al al-ta'am the child right ate the food so, if you were to talk about what is the fa'il here? Who is the subject? Yes? The, um, the kid. The kid, the tiflu, right? So it's marfu'a, right? What is the, what is the marker of rafa for it? Dhamma, right? So if we were to take out, conceptually take this word out, uh, we would change the way the verb works. So the verb would become a passive verb. How would it, what would it become? Okila. Okila, very good. So akila would turn into the word ukila. And this guy would be completely taken out. It would be ukil al ta'am. Al ta'am food uh, used to be a, an object in this sentence, but because we conceptually removed the subject by turning the verb into a passive verb, right? This now becomes na'ib al fa'il or al maf'ul al ladhi lam yusamma fa'iluhu. The, either it's called the, alterna the substitute for, for, for the subject or an object that does not have an identified subject and it's marfu' as well. So here, what would it be here? Here would be an object, it would be mansub. So in, that, in the sec first sentence, it would be tiflu ta'ama. But here it's going to be, it's going to be marfu'ah, right? It's one of the marfu'ah, it's one of the marfu'ah and it's going to be ukila al-ta'amu. Ukila al-ta'amu. Okay, so we can give a few more examples of that. In the alternative of yeah, exactly. So it's an alternative of fa'il uh, at, at this point. So we can give a few examples of that. Um, let's give a few more examples. Yes? Uh, yeah. yeah, so we can say. Let's, let's, let's use a, uh, an example that's less uh, violent <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> Something that's less, uh, more diffi uh, less difficult. Um, what else did you guys give me examples of passive, of passive uh, verbs last time? Give me more examples. Hmm? Thank you, Muhammad. Yalla, give me a passive. Give me, uh, you, you gave me like a lot last time. Think. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a few examples until you until you can come up with something uh, that you can talk about. Um, so the man أخذ الرجل المال. The man took the money. Okay. So who's the subject in this example? Who's the fa'il? Huh? Right, the man. And it's marfu'ah, so what is the marker of rafa for it? No. And this guy is an object, so it's al-mala. Now if we conceptually remove the subject by turning this verb into a passive verb, what will it become? What does akhada become? Ukhida. Become ukhida. And then this, what was once an object, now it becomes an alternative to the, uh, to the subject, or a substitute to the subject, and now it's manzfu'ah. Ukhid al-malu. And you're saying how this is working? We're conceptually removing the subject by changing uh, the, uh, the verb from a, from a direct verb to a passive verb, to a ver verb that is, that is identified as mabnin al-majhul. We don't know who did it. Doesn't matter who did it. All right. So, I'll give you an example. Nafakha. Oh, that's, that's not, that's, that's too hard. So, 
So on the day of judgment, the angels will carry will carry the earth with everything that is in it. So this is the verb. Who is the subject? Obviously. The malaika, right? <laughs> what is the marker of Rafi on it? And here, the Arda, right? Now if you were to conceptually remove the subject, how would you turn this? What would you turn this into? Humilati. Right? It would turn to Hu. Me la ti. And then al-ard becomes uh, what it's going to be like. I'm going to give you an example in the Quran. So, innama. Right? Now, innama doesn't really serve as anything in sentences. It is just there to say exclusively. Right? Exclusively, yada, yada, yada. And then tells you in, in information. So it doesn't really change anything in the sentence. So it's just there. It doesn't do anything, right? So you look at the word after it. The word after it is the first word of the sentence. It is a vowel or is it a verb or a noun? Huh? It is a noun, right? It's not a verb. So if it's a noun, then this is a noun based sentence. Which is, are we talking about ikhwa or are we talking about mu'minun? Yeah. What are we talking, what are we saying about the mu'minun? That they are brothers, right? So we're talking about the mu'minun by saying that they are brethren and that they are really, yeah, they should see each other as brothers. So this one becomes al mubtada and this one becomes khabar. Now both of them are going to be what? The whole point of this study. Both of them are marfu'ah. Both of them are marfu'ah. Both of them have the status of rafa'ah. What is the indication of rafa'ah in or the marker of rafa'ah in the word mu'minun? Wow. This is this is a jam'a mudakkar salim, right? A masculine sound plural. So if it was not marfu', it was mansub or majroor, it would be mu'minin, right? So it's the wow that tells us that this is marfu'. The word ikhwa, what is the marker of rafa' for it? Bum, right? So ikhwatun innam al mu'minuna ikhwatun. Okay. Let's think of other examples. Give me more uh, And give me Quranic ones or hadith, uh, uh, prophetic narrations, just for the yeah, just to jog your memory, because I can come up with anything really. It's just a matter of kind of using understanding. Because the point of understanding Arabic for most of us is that we strengthen our understanding of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet And this is the you know the basic goal that we want to achieve. So think think of an example from the Mus'haf. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very good. That's very good. Let's see, ulaika. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's use that one first because that's easier. <laughs> then we'll go back to yours. It's a bit more yeah, complex. So, Muhammadun Rasulullah. All right. So, this one is pretty straightforward. There's really nothing there. It's the first word is a noun. So, it's a noun based sentence. It's going to be made out of Mubtada and a Khabar. Right? So, which one is the Mubtada? Which one is the Khabar? Who are we talking about? Are we talking about Rasulullah or about Muhammad? Talking about the Prophet. What are we telling? What is our information that we have about him? That he is Rasulullah. So you know, the, one, the, the thing that we're talking about is the Mubtada. And the information we are bringing is the Khabar. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Mubtada. And this is the information. Now what is, what are, both these words are going to be? Marfu'ah. Right? What is the marker of Rafa and the word Muhammad? It is Dhamma. So Muhammadun. And what's the marker of Rafi and the word Rasul? Also Dhamma. So Muhammadun Rasulullah. That is a different word. We'll talk about that later. For now, just understand the Marfu'at. We're studying Al Marfu'at. We're studying the words that are given the status of Rafi and sentences. So when you have a noun based sentence, yeah, the, first, the word that, is, that we're talking about is the Mubtada. And the information we're giving about it is Khabar. Give me more examples. Uh, I'm going to use example that Brother Yusuf gave, uh, Yusuf gave us. Yeah, why are you on Jahannam today? Can you think, think of Jannah for a second? I think we... <laughs> Let's say, Ulaika Ashabu Jannah for, for now. <laughs> You're very dark, in a dark place right now, Yusuf. <laughs> so, Ulaika Ashabu Jannah. Now, Ulaika means those, those people, or, or them, right? So that's, uh, or they. Ashabu, 
are the people of Jannah, people of Jannah, right? So <coughs> this is a straightforward sentence. It begins with what? What does it begin with? Noun or verb? Now, there you go. So it's a noun-based sentence, very simple, right? A noun-based sentence is going to have a mubtada and a khabar. It's going to have something that we're talking about and information we're giving about that thing that we're talking about. So there's going to be the, 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 the subject or the object and then the information regarding it. So ulaika, who are we, yeah, who are we we're talking about them or we're talking about Sahib al-Jannah? We're talking about them. What, are we, what is the information that we're giving about them? That they're Ashab al-Jannah. So we're talking about these guys, Ula'ika. Who are they? Yeah, yeah, and that's what they are. So Mubtada and Khabar, they are both Marfu'at. So what is the marker of uh, here? Forget it, that is too complex for today. Let's just leave that out. The marker, we'll, we'll study it later. Ashabu. Right, the marker is Abdamma, so it's Ashabu. Ula'ika is a bit too complex for us to talk about it <laughs> today, right? But it's, uh, no, it's not Fatah, no, it's just, it's just, uh, Ahmed Yalab. Right? So what is, what is this sentence? Is it noun-based or is it verb-based? Hmm? It's noun, it start with the noun, it's a noun-based. But there's a verb right there. So what do we do now? So this is an example of a noun-based sentence that has a, within it, has a verb-based sentence. So there are two sentences happening right now. There's a noun-based sentence, that's the bigger picture. And then over here we have a verb-based sentence. Now if it's a noun-based sentence, we're going to have a mubtada and a khabar. Who's the mubtada? Who are we speaking about? So who's the mubtada here? Ahmed. So Ahmed's mubtada. That means he is marfu'ah. What is the marker of Rafi'ah on him? Hmm? Lam, Ahmed. Where is Ahmed's khabar? It's the jumla uh, ismiyah. It's the jumla ismiyah. Yeah. Is it yeah, ismiyah? Yeah, ismiyah. Yeah. So his khabar is the verb based sentence that comes after. Because that's the information we have. Right? It's actually the whole sentence is the khabar. And then we have to deal with this sentence as a verb-based sentence and study it different on its own. That's why this is a bit more complex. Right? So we look for things that, are, that, don't, that doesn't have uh, that complexity. What would, what would take away that complexity? If you would say, Ahmed, la'ibun. Yeah, he's a player and this is the khabar. Is there a difference in terms of meaning? Of course. There's a big difference in terms of what the meaning actually has. That's why when you go from a noun-based to a noun-based uh, complex with a verb or without it, the meanings will change based on what you're using and what, why you're trying to say things or what you're trying to say. All right. Any more? Yeah, look, give me. That's a verb-based. Kulu is eat. It's a command, right? So you're supposed to... What's that? Ashab al is not a mubtada and khabar. It's just a. Like, you have to think of, of something and then someone giving you information. So, what about Ashab al -feed? There has to be a piece of information uh, that, can't, that comes after that. Yeah. <sighs> to an extent, that's correct, but it's just very, very. Yeah, it's very, very uh, uh, confusing for people. It's just very confusing. Okay. Qamat hmm? is, uh, is a verb based sentence. And what about him? So, Rabbul Alameen. <laughs> so, the Lord of the Worlds. What about him? <laughs> so, Alim. He knows everything. Right now, you have a, a, a noun based sentence. Rabbu is the Mubtada. And Alim is the Khabar. Right? Now you know, now you know what's happening. Because if you say Rabbul Alameen, that's not a sentence, it's a word. The Lord of the Worlds. Yes. What about him? Give me something. Tell me something. Right? So there has to be something after that. You always have to think of the meaning. Uh, understanding grammar is learning to understand meanings within, within sentences. Yes? Yeah, again, what about, what about it? He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. Owner of the Day of Judgment. Right? 
So you need you need you need something to 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 talk about him, something to add to them. All right, let's go to the fifth. We'll come, I'll give you like a ton of examples, inshallah, soon. But I just want you guys to kind of think about uh, about things like that. So the number that's number one, two, three, and four. Number five, ismukana wa akhawatihi. Ismukana. Now, remember when we talked about Al-Mubtada uh, Al-Khabar literally one minute ago? So now we're going to add something to this. So, Allahu Ghafoor. Uh, Where's the Mubtada here? Allah. Huh? Where's the Khabar? And they're both Marfu'a. There are things that will enter sentences. There are small. There are different types of words that will enter sentences, and that will play around with the sentence and change things in it. An example of something, uh, an external uh, effector that can come to a sentence is the word kana. What does kana mean? Yeah. So what does kana mean? Was. So, kana means something has always been like that. The word kana in Arabic, when you use it in the term that it's used for, kana means something has always been like that. It's not that it was. You know, if it means it was, then the, the meaning change, then the sentence changes. Kana here means it's always been like that. Another example of a word that's very similar. So, and the name ism is called the name of kana. Wa akhawati are the brothers and sisters of kana. Kana is the head uh, the, 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 the head of a household of a family of words. Kana and asbaha. Amsa, what else do you have? Sara. Inna is a different household. These two households are enemies. They're, they're sworn enemies. The household of Inna and the household of Kana, they don't like each other at all. Right? So there's a number of different words. I gave you like uh, four that you should know. All of them have the similar meanings. Kana, it's always been like that. Asbaha, it was like that in the morning. Or it became that. Amsa, it was like that in the evening. Or it turned into that. Sara, it became that. It's all, all the same meaning. Something's always been or became such. So, Kana Allahu Ghafoor al Rahim. Ghafoor. What this guy comes and does is he comes to the sentence, the, the noun based sentence that has within it Al Mubtada and Al Khabar, and then he, but he makes a difference, he changes things. So, how would you read this ayah, Muhammad? Why would you read it? Why, why not Ghafurun? Isn't it supposed to be Mubtada? Yeah, so these guys, this family, huh, comes and it affects the khabar. It comes to the khabar, and the khabar that used to be marfu' will no longer be marfu'. They'll turn it into something mansub. So they'll give it a fatha. Kana Allahu ghafura. He's saying how, that's why Kana Allahu azizan hakima. Kana Allahu aliman qadira. Kana Allahu, and there's a lot of examples. Ghafura ar rahima. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا A lot of examples in the Qur'an. Right? Why? Because Kana and this family of words, Kana, Asbaha, Amsa, Sara, all of them mean basically the same thing. It's always been like that. It became like that. Right? So it adds, adds a meaning to the sentence. But it affects the second word of the, sent of, of, of the, of the noun-based sentence. It affects the khabar and it gives it a muslim. What is this guy called now? Yeah. So this is no longer called Khabar is called Khabar Kana is the information given through the word Kana and this is called Ism Kana it's called the, the object or the, or the noun that is, follows Kana and it's always Marfu'a it's left Marfu'a that's why one of the Marfu'at is Ism Kana wa Akhawat Kana and all the different the household all does the exact same thing yes yeah um, can I give an example? yes give me an example <laughs> yeah but there's no yeah you need it's, you're true it's just it's, it's missing certain words yes Change, uh, what there any in change in meaning? Yeah. Yeah, there's always a change in meaning. There's always a change in meaning. What was the change? So, uh, Allahu Ghafoor is a very rigid, uh, kind of lifeless statement. Meaning, it's, it's timeless and it doesn't, doesn't explain any, uh, it doesn't give any details. He is, Allah is forgiving. Kana Allahu Ghafoor Rahima is saying He has always been like that and will continue to be so. 
So it adds that, uh, that movement in the sentence. Can I change the meaning? So it adds, it doesn't really change, it kind of adds the meaning. It, it, but what, what happened by changing Marfu? Yeah, so what, 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 what kana is affecting, it's affecting the khabar. This is the word that it's affecting. It's making this word more dynamic. It's saying that it's always been. It's giving it a timeline. It's saying that this is the, from the beginning of the time to end of time, it's always been the same thing. It's not affecting the mubtada. The mubtada is staying exactly the way it is. It's affecting the other words, so it becomes mansub. If you remember, what, what is when we studied and what nasub is, nasub is either uh, masub is a primary word in the sentence that's affected from, a, from, from an external source. So this is the external source and this is the primary word in the sentence that got affected by it. The khabar got affected. It's supposed to be marfu' but it got affected and became mansub. So this change is more grammatically? Yes, grammatically. And it's, and it's to the khabar specifically. Yes, yeah, Hamdi. Very good. See? Awesome. Hamdi. You get it. You get it. Kana wa'aduhu Now the actual sentence is Wa'aduhu Maf'ul Wa'aduhu his um, His promise Maf'ul means it's going to happen it's, it's, go it's going to come it's There's no way to And this is a noun based sentence Right It's a noun based sentence Both words are marfu'ah So Wa'aduhu Maf'ulun And then the word kana came and affected this sentence. It's going to affect the khabar over here. What is it going to do to it? It's going to give it nasub. That's why we kana wa'aduhu maf'ula. Now this guy here is no, call, call, no, no longer called the mubtada. He's called ism kana. And this guy here is called khabar kana. All right? Let's try a few more ex examples. Give me more examples, yell. Kana or amsa or asbaha or sara. Asbaha. Yeah, we did the kana law. Can you think of something else? Yeah, kuntum as wajan thalata is true, but you just, you're always choosing the stuff that I have to take 10, 15 minutes explaining how it works. So kuntum. No, that's too confusing. Sheikh. People are going to get confused. Let's stick to the simple stuff. Think kana. Can you think of a, a sentence in the Quran that has kana? Yeah, but I need the ism kana to be there. So ism kana there is is estimated. It's it's not it's not written. It's not uh, verbalized. Uh, it's not vocalized. So think of something that is written. Okay, we'll just stick to the we'll stick to the uh, <laughs> to the hawasul of the ayat. <laughs> it seems to be easy. All right. So kana Allahu. Samian. So, what is the origin of this sentence before? Allah Samia. This is a noun based sentence that has a mubtada and a khabar, right? Both of them are marfu'ah, so Allahu Samian. And then, yeah, you can use the Quran. And then, kana, right? Kana came and is going to affect the khabar. Over here, it's going to make it mansub. So it affects this guy and makes it mansub. What does Allah stay? Say is marfu'ah. But what is it called now? Usum kana, right? That's why one of the marfu'at is usum kana. Wa khawat kana because it's a, it's a household, right? It's not just one word. Kana has a number of children. Asbaha wa amsa wa sara wa dhalla. Yeah. Yeah, but look for, for, for something different because there's no there's no usum kana that we can that we can uh, see. I need to. Very good. Very good. It's a good example. So dhalla is another uh, is another child ch or brother of 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 uh, kana. Wajhu. So the origin of the sentence is wajhu. His face turned black or turned very dark, right? Because he, he had a child who was a daughter, he wasn't very happy with it. So, this is the mubtada, this is the khabar, both of them are marfu'ah. So, so, when you add dhalla, you can dhalla, it affected, it affected this guy over here, the khabar. 
And this waju stayed marfu and it's called usum dalla now. Came usum dalla. All right, good. That is, that's, we're, just, we're just missing, we're just missing the khabar. It's, a, it's, it's estimated. I'll, I'll explain estimation very soon, but you know, that, it's estimated the khabar. Yes. Yeah, but there's no, there's no uh, usum and khabar there. Keep on looking. Where's kana? So here we're adding, we're looking for something that's going to be affected by kana or asbaha or dhal or amsa. Yes. Okay, there. It's not a Quranic one, but fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the origin of this sentence is al ma'u atir. The water is scented, has a nice scent. It has a fragrance, right? Asbah al ma'u atir. The water became fragranced. The water became, it became something. It wasn't like that before, but it is now. That's what asbaha means. Asbaha is one of the daughters or sons of Kana. So it does the same thing. It's going to affect the second word. This is the mubtada, this is the khabar. Correct? This is the mubtada and khabar. It's going to affect the khabar. It's going to leave the mubtada alone. So asbaha, al ma is going to stay marfu'a. What's the marker of rafi' and ma? And here is going to be al fatha masuf. And this is called now Usum Asbaha. Right? Usum Kana is one of the marfu'at. It stays, nothing touches it. So when you when you when you see Usum Kana, what it actually is, is just a previous mubtada. It used to be a mubtada, but now because Kana and one of his sisters or, or one of his daughters came in, uh, it affected the sentence. It stayed marfu'a, but now it's called usm Kana. This is just a mubtada in disguise. Okay, so this guy over here, it's a ripoff. He's just a mubtada. That's all he is. Didn't do anything. It's just that he wasn't affected by the word that came before. Yes, yeah, Hamdi. Sure. Wakana ذَلِكَ That's fine. I can live with that one. Kana. Thalika. And Allahi. Fawzan. Now, the origin of this sentence is pretty simple. Thalika. And Allahi. Fawz. So, Thalika means that, that thing. We're talking about something that we know about. Right? Something that we've identified before that, right? And Allah in the eyes of Allah or in the uh, in the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fawz is a win. Right? So and Allah is an extra part of the sentence that doesn't this is the mubtada over here. Dhalika is the mubtada. And here is the khabar. So when Kana came in, it affected what is it going, what is it going to affect? It affects the khabar, right? The khabar goes from being marfu'a, thalika fawzun, it becomes fawzan, and thalika stays ism kana. Now you're going to ask me, well, where is the marker of rafi' and the word thalika? Well, that's uh, something we'll talk about later. Because it, the, the marker of rafi' for the word thalika is not apparent. It's something muqaddar. We don't, we don't actually know. We can't, we, we can't see it because the word thalika doesn't change. It always stays thalika. It could be marfu'a, mansub, it stays thalika. It, doesn't, it never changes. Yeah, it's just missing, it's just missing something. It's just mi it's missing, it's missing a khabar, that's all. It's missing a khabar. One more, one more example? Let's see if we can get one more example out of you. Yalla, ya Hamzi. Yeah, this, uh, we've done, we've done, I think, our fair share of kana Allahu. There you go. Khalasa, shagal al ma'akum al umur. Very good. Asbaha ma'ukum gawra. The origin of this sentence is ma'ukum ghawr. That's the origin of this sentence. Ghawr means it's under the ground. You can't, you can't extract it. You can't get it anymore. So your water is under the ground, right? Now both of them are what? What are these two things? Which is the mubtada? What are we talking about here? Yeah, so water is, who, is what we're talking about. So it's mubtada. What, what is our information that we have about it? Ghawr is under the ground. So it's khabar. 
they're both going to be marfu'ah. So ma'ukum, what is the marker of, of, of rafi'an ma'ukum? Where are you, Muhammad? On, on, on the Hamza, right? So over here, because this part kum is an extra, it's a pronoun, right? So ma'ukum, and where is the, what's the marker of rafi'an, the word gawr? Gawrun, right? So asbaha came, comes along, asbaha comes along, and what does it do? What does it affect? Yeah, it's going to affect the khabar because it's one of Kana's daughters or sisters. So it affects the khabar, and the khabar goes from marfu'ah huh, to being So And this thing over here, ma'ukum, stays the same, but what is it called now? Usum asbaha. Right? So ma'ukum is a ripoff, isn't it a ripoff? It's the same thing. Like ma'ukum is a mubtada, is marfu'ah. And here it's just it's the same thing, it's just called usum kana now, but it's the same thing. Asbaha comes in and it hits the, the second word. Now we're going to talk in a second, we're going to talk of an example of another, like Inna, their sworn enemies, their arch enemies, they come in and they don't touch the khabar. They hit the, the mubtada right away. But for these guys, they only hit the khabar. And they change the khabar. Usum ka, the mubtada stays and it's called Usum Asbaha or Usum Kana or Usum Amsa and it stays marfu'ah. We have time for two more examples. Yal. Hmm? Okay. Sure, but where's Kana there? No, no, it's Mubtada, yeah. It's just a marker of Rafa there is, 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 is concealed, it's, it's estimated, it's not apparent. I'm not going to give you guys the second one, the second one, I'm going to stick to Usum Kana. Just give me a few more examples. We just said that a second ago, Ya Shaykh, give me something new. Okay. Something that doesn't, doesn't have Dhalika in it. Can you guys think of something that doesn't have Dhalika? Yeah, where is Kana there? So yeah, Kana Mashuda, but where is the Usum? Where is the Mubtada? See, it's not there, it's concealed. A lot of times, there'll be words that are concealed or estimated in sentences. We need, we need, so we're looking for sentences that have both, both elements of the sentence in it. So let's, let's give you an example of maybe something a bit... Uh, uh, we don't have any more time. Okay, Kana. al Jawu. Yeah, so the, the weather was nice, right? So if you took at the, the origin of the sentence, it's al jawu Jamil. The weather is mubtada, nice is the khabar. Kana enters, what does it do? What does it affect? It affects the khabar. So the khabar goes from going jamilun, becomes jamilan. And this guy stays the same. He's just called Usum Kana. That's all that changes, is that he call, he's called Usum Kana. I will give more examples, inshallah, of this uh, next time. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah bihamdik. Ashinu la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu.